and connection. Ryla is about innovation and connection. Innovational, welcoming, and spectacular. Inspiring, motivating, and energetic. Diverse, entertaining, and very inclusive. Trying new things. Meeting new people is rewarding, lively, and memorable. As informative, energetic, and very inspiring. Ryla is an interactive experience. Leadership, growth, and excitement. That is inspiring, invigorating, and engaging. Ryla is leadership, connection, and fun. Opportunity is the way to Welcome everyone to this year's 2020 District 6400 Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. Thank you so much for attending this year's conference. My name is Kyle Wallagor and I am your 2020 Ryla head coach. Myself and the entire Ryla co uh, entire coaching staff are excited to meet you this year. On behalf of the entire District 6400 Ryla Planning Committee, I would like to give a shout out to the entire 16... <laughs> Rotarian 6400 planning staff, District Governor Noel Jackson, our awesome Ryla chairs, assistant coach and Ryla producer Mario Lukey, and all the awesome Ryla coaches for your support to make this year's virtual event as great as it can be. This year's theme is Alone Together, Connected Through Leadership. 2020 is going to be a year we are going to remember for the rest of our lives, and this year's theme is extra special. Many of you probably still are still getting used to the virtual learning environment and might not be able to see your friends on a daily basis in person. Just like the theme says, even though we might not be in person, we are alone and are alone together, but we are always still connected through leadership. Now, please welcome President of Rotary International, Holgar Kanak. Hi, I'm Holger Knack, President of Rotary International. I want to say hello wherever we are right now. My purpose here today is to command you on your decision to take a risk. However, this opportunity has come to you and brought you here today to this virtual space. You each have something in common with every other participant here. You have no idea what you are getting into. But getting out of your comfort zone and trying this new thing, you have taken a leap of faith that you will finish the program with more than you had when you started. More what, you ask? I have no idea. And that is the beautiful part. Every rider event is different and your personal experience will be yours and yours alone, even if you are surrounded virtually by your fellow adventurers. Together, you will explore skills in conflict resolution, in communication, in problem solving. And each of these areas will help you to find yourself as a leader and bring out and shine a light on qualities that you don't know you already have. And this experience will stay with you in ways that you cannot anticipate. And I promise will surprise you. So now I invite you to sit up, find the best camera angle, adjust your volume, and open your mind and your heart to your fellow adventurers. I cannot wait to hear about what you achieve today, tomorrow, and for all the years to come. And don't forget, have fun. Thank you. Kyle, you're muted. And now let me introduce the 2020 Ryla coaching staff. The coaching staff is comprised of 18 student leaders who are in high school or attending a college or university. Hi, my name is Kyle Walagora. I'm a sophomore at Wayne State University studying business management. I was a graduate of Allen Park High School, and this is my third year on the Ryla coaching staff and second as head coach. Hi, my name is Shihad Al-Ibrahimi. I am a first year political science student at the University of Windsor. I'm from Leamington, Ontario in Canada, 
and I've been a Riley coach for three years now and I'm very excited to see how the virtual platform turns out. Hello everyone, my name is Sada Saadi and this is my first year as a Riley coach. I'm currently a senior at Anderson High School in Michigan and I'm so excited to meet everyone at this year's Riley. See you there. Hi, my name's Olivia. I'm 17 years old. I go to Lasore High School and I'm from Windsor, Ontario. Hi, my name is Asnita Tuladar, and I'm a senior at Canton High School in Canton, Michigan. This is my first year coaching for Ryla, and I'm so excited to meet everyone here. Hi, uh, my name is Kyla Hicks. I'm from Kingsville, Ontario, and I'm currently going to St. Clair College for travel and tourism. I'm also studying holistic nutrition online. And yet, uh, this is going to be an awesome Ryla. I'm super excited. Hi, my name is Jay Newman, and I'm thrilled to be involved in Ryla again this year. I'm a grade 11 student at St. Thomas of Villanova High School in LaSalle, Ontario, Canada. I love doing theater arts along with visual arts and many sports. I hope that your Riley experience this year is inspiring to you along your journey of service and leadership in your years ahead. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Anissa Lazy. I'm a senior at Allen Park High School in Allen Park, Michigan. This is my third year at Ryla, but my second year on the coaching staff. Hi, I'm Olivia Bluffes. I am a senior at Kent High School, and I'm super excited to be one of your coaches of Ryla. One fun fact about me is that I have traveled to over 20 countries outside the U.S. Hi, my name is Mary Lukey. I'm assistant coach for Ryla this year. I am a senior at Allen Park High School, and I am an officer for our Interact Club and Student Council. Hey guys, my name is Rachel. I'm a senior this year at Allen Park High School, and this is my first year being a coach and second year attending Ryla. Hey, I'm Janique Shaw. I'm a freshman at the University of Michigan, and I'm super excited to meet everyone. Hi, my name is Lisa Lukey. I'm a junior at Allen Park High School. I'm a coach this year for the 2020 Riley Conference. Hi, my name is Frank. I'm a senior at Southgate Anderson High School this year, and it will be my second year coaching Riley. Hi, my name is Peyton Molesley. I'm a senior at Plymouth High School. This is my third year going to Ryla, and this is my first year as a coach. Hi, Ryla 2020. It's Serana Horn. I'm one of your alumni coaches for Ryla this year, and I've been a member of Ryla since 2017, and I attend the University of Michigan Dearborn as a sophomore. Now, even though Ryla is virtual this year, we all have a bunch of fun activities and presentations laid out for you guys to make you all better leaders. We hope you enjoy Ryla this year. Thank you, awesome Ryla coaching staff. Now, let me talk about our info for this, this weekend's conference. So you will find all of your, inf all the information that you need for, Ry for the Ryla conference on Linktree uh, slash Rotary, I meant Ryla 6400. I'm gonna go through each of the tabs. First, we have the Ryla notebook at the top that will have all of your agendas, the bios, and some communication tips for you can use whenever you have time. Don't, that's a Zoom link. That's a Zoom link. We don't need to, we already are in the Zoom link, so that's great. Now, this is the Rila Instagram. Make sure you guys follow the Rila Instagram. We can go through a little bit. We can go scroll down a lot more. There you'll see all of our awesome Ryla coaches. And then you will see our Ryla Facebook page. Make sure you guys follow that. And there will also be the coaches interest form. That will be something we'll talk about at the end of Ryla. So stay tuned to that. and our Ryla evaluation. That will be something you will take at the end of, at the conclusion of our Ryla event. So stay tuned, I'll talk about more about that on Saturday. And now let me introduce Rachel At Atterbury from Allen Park High School, who is also the publicist for the Allen Park Interact Club, who will lead us in our first activity of Ryla, virtual trivia. Rachel. Hi guys. Wait, so Kyle, where did you post the Google form? There's no Google form. Just talk about the um, activity we're gonna do. Oh, okay. So 
my job was to come up with the Kahoot. And then unfortunately the Kahoot wouldn't work for a big group, but I had fun facts about just leaders and important people around the world. And it was just like interesting facts about them. So, yeah. You're going to get a Zoom poll with the questions and you can follow along and we can take the quiz all together and see how everyone does. So Rachel, Mario will pull it up. It's going to be under uh, polls. Should I read them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so first question. His name was originally Michael until his father changed it at six years old. And we'll give him about a minute, minute and a half to do the, um, um, to answer. We need Kahoot music in the background. <laughs> Okay, I think that's been enough time. <laughs> Should I go over the answers before or after? Yeah, what's the answers? Okay, so his name was originally Michael until his father changed it at six years old. It is unfortunately not Harry Styles. It is Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, awesome. second question. <laughs> After becoming aware of an arranged marriage, this person ran away and stole cattle to pay for their travels. Barack Obama, Jesus Christ, Mother Teresa, or Nelson Mandela? Up. 
Okay. So the correct answer was Nelson Mandela. Okay, question three. This person was the captain of Cornell's Frisbee team. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Bill Nye, Andy Bernard from The Office, or Anthony Fauci? The question was, this person was the captain of Cornell's ultimate Frisbee team. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Bill Nye, Andy Bernard from The Office, or Anthony Fauci? Time's up. Okay, so unfortunately, Andy Bernard from the office was not the captain of the Cornell Ultimate Frisbee team. It was Bill Nye. Darn it. <laughs> okay, question four. This influential person's hobbies include horseback riding, pigeon racing, and football. Is it Kyle Walagora, Stephen Hawking, Queen Elizabeth, or Gandhi? happened we lost people Time's up. Okay, believe it or not, horse riding, pigeon racing, and football are Queen Elizabeth's hobbies. 
I don't I like horse. I was like, what? <laughs> I don't like horseback riding. I don't like pigeon racing, but I do like football. So I'm like, what? Yeah, I don't think she plays football. I'm I'm guessing she's she watches it. So probably that's what I would assume. Question four, five actually. This one is quite difficult. He is the youngest member of One Direction, but also very passionate about human rights. Is it Barack Obama, Nelson Mandela? Gandhi or Harry Styles? <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't know I was on mute. Okay, the answer is Harry Styles, not Barack Obama. And the only one. <laughs> That's like one of the only. <laughs> Last question. Okay, this is a, this is a bonus question. So, um, despite causing the deaths of about forty-five million people. This person was known as a feminist. Mao Zedong, Benito Mussolini, Genghis Khan, or Joseph Stalin? dictator was Mao Zedong. He was the communist leader of the People's Republic of China. Hmm, I didn't know that. Great job, Rachel. Thanks. Now, let me introduce Dr. Noel Jackson, District Governor uh, of District 6400. Noel, take it away. Got to unmute myself first. You always have to remember that. Hey, it's so great to be here. Thank you for, uh, for introducing me, Kyle. Uh, I'm uh, Noel Jackson, and I am the current District 6400 uh, governor. 
Uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, District 6400 goes all the way from Adrian, Michigan to Essex, Ontario. Uh, we have 53 clubs, uh, including our uh, Interact Club, and we have uh, 1,600 members. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really uh, excited that you're going to have this rally experience this weekend. You know, even in, uh, in an environment where we're being challenged with so many, uh, you know, these challenges uh, are really opportunities. Uh, and so we have this opportunity to make sure that RILA takes place this year. Uh, RILA was started in 1959 in Australia. And uh, so that means it's been going on now for uh, like 60, 61 years. And so it's a tradition in, uh, in, in Rotary and uh, it's a really uh, an amazing program. I really want to take my, uh, uh, pay my compliments to Kyle for the great job he's done uh, carrying this program forward and uh, actually creating something from scratch. And it's going to become a model, it uh, looks like, from around, around the Rotary world. And when I say around the Rotary world, uh, there's 1.2 million Rotarians uh, in uh, 200 different countries that uh, comprise about 35,000 Rotary clubs. So, uh, you know, I hope that this is just the beginning of an introduction of leadership for all of you. This year we, uh, in Rotary, we say Rotary opens opportunities. And uh, in our district, uh, the theme is be a hero, which is, you see uh, above me here, uh, D6400 superheroes. Uh, so be a hero means a human engaging Rotary opportunities. And uh, this is an opportunity to create service, create friendship, diversity, leadership, and integrity uh, across our communities and in our own lives. So uh, I really look forward to a, an exciting weekend with you. And uh, thanks for your attendance. And uh, you're going to get a lot out of it. Uh, and also, I'm excited. You, uh, soon, you're going to be uh, hearing an address from uh, Jennifer Jones. Is that correct? Yeah, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer is an amazing person and we're so excited she's going to be president of Rotary International and uh, she's going to take Rotary into a whole nother orbit and I'm looking forward to that. So Kyle, thank you so much for all your efforts and uh, man, I love your background. That looks fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. And now uh, let me, uh, Noel, will you introduce Jennifer Jones? I will introduce Jennifer Jones. Uh, Jennifer Jones, uh, is a uh, past district governor in uh, District 6400. Previous to that, she was uh, president of her Rotary Club, which is uh, Windsor Roseland. Uh, the year that she was district governor, she put on an amazing peace conference where she brought together leaders from all around the world to talk about peace initiatives and activities. Jennifer has had positions in Rotary. Uh, she's been uh, uh, a Rotary uh, uh, international director. She's uh, been a uh, Rotary International Vice President. And now we are going to be having her as uh, the Rotary International President for 22, tw uh, 22 23. And uh, we're looking forward to this. Uh, she's an incredibly dynamic person. She has a day job um, where she maintains a, a marketing company and uh, she does all kinds of amazing things. She's been an absolute amazing fundraiser for polio, water projects, peace projects. She's literally raised hundreds of millions of dollars. That's the type of powerful person she is. So uh, Jennifer, you are just the most amazing person and I'm really looking forward to uh, what's gonna be happening with Rotary in the future. Well, thank you, Governor Noel, and hello, Ryla. I am so excited to be able to spend a few minutes with you all tonight and to share hopefully some experiences and uh, a little bit of my path and past. And uh, also, I'd, I'd really love to be able to, uh, in the 15 minutes that we've been allocated to be together, uh, I wanna share some things, but I also wanna hear from you. If you have questions or uh, comments that you wanna make, you can put them in the chat box. And uh, Kyle, thank 
thank you so much for the very kind invitation to uh, to join in and to participate. I uh, I think you probably have already heard from President Holger uh, Kanak, who uh, is our current international president. He resides in Germany, as has been explained to you, and he'll be uh, president until July one of this year. Our uh, incoming president then shifts over to India to another part of the Rotary world, and then the year following that, the presidency is going to be housed here in Canada. Now, our actual uh, headquarters for Rotary International is just outside of downtown Chicago in a place called Evanston, Illinois. And so while I live here in, in just outside of Windsor, Ontario, in a little place called LaSalle, uh, my husband and I, we actually are going to move to Chicago for two years. Sounds like a pretty good thing, doesn't it? Yeah, well, let's hope the border opens and we have a, a really good vaccine in place because we're excited to be able to go and represent our world and to be able to meet with people just like you who are on this incredible leadership path. So, you know, one of the things that as I was, you know, reflecting upon things that I wanted to be able to talk with you uh, tonight about, one of the things, you know, that I was thinking about was, was leadership. Obviously, this is a leadership training. And this morning, I spent this morning on a call with probably about 200 women from, I'm gonna guess maybe 60 to 80 countries. And we had panelists from that uh, spoke from Mexico, from Africa and uh, from Taiwan. And the other panelists, um, uh, Mexico, anyway. So very wide ranging uh, group of, of, of women who had very impressive things to share. Ecuador was the third one, my apologies. And one of the threads that ran through all of their comments about leadership, and it's something that really resonated with me, that all of them talked about their early years, their, their, their grade school years, their ch childhood years, and who influenced them. For many of them, they said it was their parents. For another, they said it was a principal. You know, someone in their life who saw in them something that sparkled. You know, my friend, Ann Britt Azabel from Sweden spoke and she has red hair and she's a member of parliament there and in Sweden. And, you know, she talked about how when she was a young girl that she had red hair and she, she always felt like, you know, she was, she was in the, the shadows and, you know, she had a principal who was able to see in her this incredible spark so much so that she started to believe in herself and she took steps forward and leadership opportunities began to unfold and other mentors started to fall into place all to be able to be someone now who sits, you know, in government in her own country. I bring this up because I know in my own journey that, you know, my parents were great about encouraging me. And one of the things that they said to my brothers and to myself was to dream big, think big. You know, there's no, there's no reason to think small. And that doesn't mean that you have to go in a space rocket to the moon. What it means is that you have to dream your wildest dreams, your greatest dreams, and then find the ways to achieve them. And so, you know, I know as a, as a kid, I, I did fun things. I held telethons and things like this to raise money for local charities. And my parents never told me I couldn't do it. So I just kept doing stuff like that. And then, you know, one by one, people entered into my life and opened opportunities and doors for other experiences to be able to happen, other leadership experiences. And I congratulate you so much for being here um, as part of Ryla Online. You know, I've been to Ryla for years, probably the past 20 years. I've attended Ryla Camp every year and had a chance to meet with the class and you know, get a chance to hang out a little bit and play some games and do different things like this, where we, you know, we get to understand our leadership our styles. We all have different styles and there's no right or there's no wrong style. You have to find out what's right for you. But, you know, coming online is something obviously we've all had to do. And, you know, in the past seven or eight months, we've gotten really good 
at figuring out how to, you know, communicate in these virtual platforms. And, you know, you guys are, I think, probably a little ahead of the curve than, you know, folks in my generation who don't spend as much time maybe in, in this kind of virtual connectivity, whether it's FaceTime or other platforms that, that you might be using. But, you know, one of the hallmarks, I think, of this experience, and you don't have it to compare, so I just want to offer this to you, you know, in person is great. You know, the socialization, the getting to know each other. But this is a very intimate experience where you get to see everybody's face. You get to see our, our, our you know, gestures, the way, that, you know, are we happy? Are we sad? You know, is something that I just said something that resonates with you? And you see other people go, oh, yeah, that's cool. You know, you say something and you see the heads nodding and it's so validating. Sometimes in an in-person experience, we don't really get that kind of real-time feedback. And so, you know, this is a really cool opportunity because we also, you know, actively use things like chat or reactions, thumbs up, you know, happy faces, different things like that to, to showcase, you know, our feelings as we're listening to some to someone. And every time we see one of those little things, it's just like being on social media, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, you know, we see the likes, we see the, the responses that people provide when, when it is that, you know, something goes really, goes really well. So, my own personal leadership journey in a nutshell, I want to give it to you in a couple of minutes. And then what I'd like to do, I really would like to do is hear from you. I'd like to hear your questions and there is nothing that I won't answer. So uh, I participated in uh, student government when I was in high school. I um, was the minister of entertainment. It was an elected position. And uh, I, I went for that position over the presidency because I knew that I could have some fun with it. And I remember organizing a school-wide field trip. We had, I don't even remember how many buses pulled up and everybody went off to a different, a different activity that one teacher, they, you know, we went to them and said, what's your passion point? And one teacher loved French cooking. So she took a bus full of students to a French restaurant where they learned about French food. Another teacher loved playing pool. So he took a bus full of folks to a pool hall and they played pool. Everybody did something a little, a little bit different. But that organizational ability to gather all of the teachers together, figure out what they wanted to do, and then put the logistics into place and execute it. The fact that they trusted me to be able to do that was such a big thing. And, you know, I think sometimes you rise to what's put in front of you. And so I like to put things in front of myself where I can knock them down. And, you know, sometimes I've got friends who look at me and think, oh my goodness, you know, what crazy idea are you coming up with next? But I never think they're crazy ideas. I always think that they're real ideas. They're good ideas. You heard District Governor Noel just talk about the fact that I organized a peace conference. That was just well, it was a few years ago. I won't say how long ago, but I, I organized a peace conference. And I remember people telling me like, well, that's kind of, you're kind of biting off a big, a big piece of, you know, of the pie. And, you know, maybe you should look at it a little bit smaller. I don't want to look at small. I wanted to look at big. And we held it on the waterfront in Windsor, Ontario. And I said, you know, I want to make sure we have a parade of the flags of the world along the waterfront and invite the community to come and march along with their flag and showcase our diversity. And again, people thought, oh, that's crazy. Well, you know what? Thousands of people showed up to march along with their flags and we ended up having a big party on the waterfront um, right in, in downtown Windsor overlooking Detroit. We had a fireworks display that was huge and people told me again, you're not going to be able to do it. Well, guess what? We did it. That night on the Tiger baseball game, they, the, the announcers were saying, what? what's going on in Windsor? There's a great fireworks display going on. We had world class speakers. People told me we would never be able to afford them. You know what? I found sponsors that were willing and said, I'd like to pay for something like that. So never think small. Think of the things that you want to accomplish and go at it, go after it. And you know what, you're the, you, you know, even if you shoot for the stars and you only reach the moon, I know it's a cliche statement, but the reality is, is that sure, maybe at that peace conference, I might've liked 25,000 people, but instead we ended up with somewhere closer to five. And that was, you know, all of the attendees and the community members and special speakers that we had come in from all over the world. Um, so 
That's the key message that I want to leave with you tonight is to empower yourself to think big. And right now, I know that I'm in a position that is the largest one I've ever been able to um, to to sort of ascend into and to have been elected into. And that is now to serve as the president of Rotary International in two years time. And I'll be the first woman to be able to do this in our organization's 115 year history. We've never had a woman president, you know, but I wasn't selected because I was a woman. I was selected because I was qualified. I put in the time, I did the hard work, just like my male colleagues did. And when we all interviewed around the table, this year was the time that I was selected. And I'm really excited because that means I get to represent all 1.2 million Rotarians, hundreds of thousands of Rotaractors, Interactors, RILA members, and to be your voice and to be able to travel the world and meet with uh, all kinds of amazing people, both inside and outside of Rotary. And so it's a privilege to be able to represent all of you and the rest of the Rotary world and to help shine a light on what it is that we do. And I hope Rotary is going to be part of your journey for a long time to come because it is something that has meant the world to me. And I know that I am a much better person because I have served as a Rotarian. So let's open up the floor, Kyle. I don't know if you've got some questions um, in the chat room or if anybody um, has anything that they want to ask or comment on uh, I, i'll be glad to glad to take anything yeah we got a few minutes left um okay. if anybody wants to raise their hand use the raise hand feature or type it in the chat i can i can just read it off if we have to and i know it's early days and you guys don't know each other well but <laughs> you know what step outside your comfort zone hey do you hear me i have a quick question I can hear you, um, yes. First of all, I just want to say I appreciate all the work you guys put into this very large organization. I love the purposes and the uh, motives behind it. Um, just a quick question. I wonder what is the end goal here? Or is there even an end goal in the first place? I like to see things in, a, uh, in, in the future, you know, just to see what my, what my goal is. Sure, great question. Do you mean the end goal for Ryla for this weekend? Yeah. Perfect. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, Ryla is known for is, you know, you walk in, again, not really knowing what to expect, um, but stretching your boundaries and understanding and learning. I mean, that's that's one of the key things that you're going to do here is, you know, learn that maybe the way that you think is unique and um, maybe there's talents that you have that in sitting with other leaders, you realize, wow, you know, there's something else I could do with this, um, that hopefully this encourages you to take additional leadership growth opportunity steps and to walk away from this with some new friends, uh, friends that are like-minded, who understand that making our world a better place is the ultimate cool thing to do. And so I hope that you, know, you guys are all open and receptive to the different speakers that are gonna be on here and to the ideas that you share with each other. And you know, diverse perspective is a really good thing. We all can't look at things the same way. And so if one of your colleagues on you know, this call says something that is different from the way you think, that's okay. And so allow yourself to just be really open, soak it all in like a sponge. And hopefully when this concludes in a couple of days time, you feel like, you know what, maybe you've been challenged a bit to be, um, to be a, a, maybe a different kind of leader than you even knew you had in you. And so be open to that, allow that to kind of wash over you as, uh, as you participate with everyone. And, uh, and please, make sure that you participate and add your thoughts because that's gonna be how you get the most out of it. Thanks for the question. Thank you for the answer. <coughs> Sorry, one final question uh, from Audrey, I believe. Did you find it hard sometimes when doing this large scale, um, when doing these large scale projects and how do you get through someone of uh, some of those challenges? Sure. Thanks, Audrey. Yeah. You know what? It's, it's sometimes things are not easy. And you know what? Sometimes life is not easy. Right now, I think clearly we're in the middle of a circumstance where we can all say that life is not easy. We've been faced with the most enormous challenge that all of us have ever gone through in our, in our entire lives. And, you know, 
that affects you the same way that it affects me, the same way it affects your parents and your grandparents and, you know, brothers, sisters, we're all in this. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Um, we're all in this kind of unique time period together. So, you know, sometimes when things are difficult, you know, you have to figure out how to stay positive. And that's one of the things that I think is really exceptional about what you're doing this weekend is that having this kind of a leadership camp at a time when we're in a fairly dark period um, is really about harnessing positivity within yourself. And, you know, I think you can probably all tell me about someone in your um, immediate environment, one of your best friends, um, maybe it's you, uh, maybe it's a, a sibling, maybe it's someone um, from your school who isn't really coping well right now. You know, mental health issues are something that we need to be really, you know, locked into right now and making sure that we're looking around at everybody who we relate to to make sure they're okay. And so, you know, being positive is hard work. And, you know, sometimes people, you know, especially when you're thinking big, sometimes people are gonna knock you down, but that's where you have to be strong and that's where you have to be positive and, um, and surround yourself with like-minded people, surround yourself with other people who are willing to you know, think the way that you think um, in, terms of, in terms of doing good stuff. And you know, the people that you're gonna meet on this call, I hope that you make some, some friends that you, that you know for a long time. And um, I guess I'll leave you with that, just as a congratulations and a thank you for, for being brave, you know, for being brave enough to say, here's a whole bunch of people I don't know, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be open. And, you know, at the end of all of this, walk away knowing that you were perhaps changed a little bit. And uh, I, I hope that, uh, you know, I look forward to connecting with Kyle afterwards to hear the outcome of what it is that happened over the course of this camp and, uh, you know, some of the, the success stories. So congratulations and uh, enjoy the rest of your time together. And uh, I'm going to sit and just listen for a few minutes while you continue on. So have a good night, everybody, and take care. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. On, behalf Thanks, of, on behalf of the staff, thank you so much for attending and giving us this presentation. It's very much appreciated. Um, also, next attendees, we are going to take a short five minute break. Use this time to stretch, grab a snack, and please be back. It is at 649 right now. So let's make it 655. Jennifer, if thank anyone you. had any other questions, um, one of our coaches in like our group chat, All right, welcome back everyone. Now let me introduce Frank. Frank is a senior at Southgate Anderson High School who is very involved in band playing the saxophone. Please help me welcome our first coaches showcase, Frank. Thank you for the introduction, Kyle. I believe I have a presentation coming up right now. Yes, you do. Just wait one second. I don't know why. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm going to talk to you guys today about one of my favorite methods of leadership, leading by example. We can go ahead and move on to the next slide. So I want to first talk about me and my personal experience with leadership. Um, I've been a member of the South Lake Anderson School Improvement Team. I attended a conference called My Lead at Michigan State University, another fantastic leadership conference. Um, I've also attended the Leadership and Mental Health Summit in Lansing, which was really eye-opening. Um, my biggest kind of experience of leadership is my marching band section leadership, my sophomore, junior, and senior year. And then, of course, a RILA coach. I have a picture of my section right there, and then a picture of the coach is in our participants from last year as well. And go ahead and move on to slide three. So a little bit more about my personal experience. I kind of wanted to set up this presentation to talk to you mainly about my experience as a student leader and then what kind of leading by example can do. Because I think if you can effectively lead by example, it can really motivate a group of people. Um, so again, my biggest experience being my band, um, being definitely the most effective way of motivating that group. Um, my personal recommendation anyway, I think you can apply this to many aspects of leadership, whether you lead a marching band as I do, um, a sport, even really like of future jobs, you could use this skill. Um, I talk to my team, I say, what do you guys want to improve on today? Um, setting personal goals, even small ones. And then I then talk about them, what do you want to achieve by the end of our season or end of our time kind of working together? 
Um, this sets up short-term goals and long-term goals. And setting goals is a super important aspect of being a leader because setting those goals for them lets them measure their personal progress. And again, um, personal progress, in my opinion, is the key determining factor of success in a season. Um, I have a picture right there of actually uh, one of my band programs at World Championships in Dayton, Ohio. And we did not get gold that year. Um, however, we improved so much as an entire team over that season. The skills we improved from the beginning to the end were just incredible. Our next slide right there, some good evidence for leading by example, really, um, because I could talk about it all I want, but um, being a student leader, maybe this isn't proven quite as much. So there's actually a study in 2011 done by Brett Simmons, who is an associate professor Did we lose Frank? Back. Like going above and beyond their average duties um, rather than doing just their standard job. And how they measured this was based on the leadership skills that the leader showed. Um, participants were far more likely to go above and beyond their job duties when they had a strong leader that was doing the same thing. Again, highlighting that leading by example. Um, and then when I talk about a strong leader, my big things are like four key traits that pop into my head. I came up with a kind of fun literary device for that. Uh, people enjoy cooking risotto. I heard that the more odd, I guess, the memorization technique is, the more likely you are to remember it. Um, so I thought about these as positivity, empathy, conflict resolution, and even respect. Um, they sound kind of basic, but they're going to go such a long way. Uh, positivity being if you show up, to wherever you're leading and you have a smile on your face and you're enthusiastic about it, that kind of positive energy is going to really flow into your team. And it's going to help them be positive as well. Um, they're going to be more engaged in whatever you're doing. Uh, next up, we have empathy. This will be one of the harder ones for sure because um, being empathetic is definitely a skill you have to work on. But that's basically relating to someone, uh, leveling with them on a really deep level, especially if they're having troubles um, if you are ever leading like a sport group or a band such as I am, uh, one thing that I like to do that helps with empathy is think back to a time where I was in their shoes, remembering my first year, uh, remembering the struggles that I went through, and I can kind of use those to help motivate whoever's having trouble that day. Uh, next up, conflict resolution, another big one. Uh, my biggest tip for that is just if there's ever a problem in a team you're leading, you want to be kind of an impartial mediator of the problem. You don't want to encourage one side rather than the other. You want to hear both sides fairly and justly. And there's a good chance that being another student or a peer of them, you might not be able to resolve the problem entirely. And if you ever can't do that, it's totally okay to take it to someone higher than you, such as a director of a program, more of a teacher kind of person, or just a leader in that sense. And finally, respect. Although it's like a very basic principle, it really does, again, go a long way. Um, you want to treat everyone in your team with fairness um, and just, yeah, I mean, treat people with kindness, to quote Harry Styles, of course. Um, I have a little picture right there that I really liked showing kind of the job of a leader. You want to really hold your team up and help them across different bridges or problems they might be having. And moving on to our final slide, I have some just tips for successful application of this technique. Um, I have some really important ones at the bottom, but I'm going to kind of work my down this list right here. Number one, I say you can give your team the tools they need to succeed, but only they can apply them. Um, and when I say that, it kind of goes right on with the second tip, focus on guiding a group of people rather than giving them orders. Um, that basically by when I say that, I mean, as a leader, you can give them all the tools they need to succeed, but you can't force them to apply them. Um, that's not really being a leader, that's being more of a boss. And that's definitely something I try to stay away from. Um, Frank, you're frozen. That. Um, I'm frozen. Can you hear me now? You're good now. You're good. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so definitely you can't tell your team to do anything you wouldn't do yourself. It will make you appear as definitely a weak leader. And I feel like when you lead them, you're much more effective if you're doing everything along with them. Um, be the change you want to see is one of my points right there. Um, and when I say that, it also goes hand in hand with positivity. Um, if, or anything, really. If you are involved in a program and something's not going quite like you want it to, 
if you start being the example of that change, um, your peers, your members with you will definitely kind of jump on and follow suit. And finally, allow your team to teach you. I think this is a really big one as well, because it's important to remember that even though we're leaders, we're all the same. Uh, that doesn't mean we're better than anybody else we're leading, um, because we're all living together ultimately. I think about that coming back to this conference each year too, because we hear from a lot of keynote speakers. And even though I do coach it, I learn things about leadership every single year from this conference. And taking it to our final slide, I just have any room for questions, if anyone has anything at all. If anyone has any questions, we have time for maybe two of them. Um, please put them in the chat or um, raise your hand. A lot of band people, Frank. I'm liking it. I'm seeing some really diverse instruments too, which is really cool. I know. As a band person myself, I'm like, wow. All right, anyone? Final call. Got a trombone person. That's good. I play trombone. Ooh. Good. <laughs> okay, one question. Do you have any favorite marching band songs that you played? <laughs> As far as marching band goes, I would say we play a lot of Sweet Caroline at my school. It's kind of like our main pep song. I don't know, the crowd really likes it. So it gives like a really high energy kind of situation. So I enjoy that a lot. <laughs> what was your favorite uh, show you ever did? Favorite show? Um, our shows are all original music. And one was called Portrait of a City. And I played a really awesome jazzy duet with my one of my best friends in band that year. So I always think back with fond memories of that season. Wonderful. Thanks a lot, Frank. Yeah, of course. Next, we have our final coaches showcase for the for the uh, tonight. Now let me introduce Ganit. She is a freshman at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor studying bio, health, and society. Please welcome Ganit. Hi, everyone. I'm Ganit Shaw, and I'm going to pre be presenting on conflict resolution and how to be an effective leader. Um, before we go to the next slide, can like one person raise their hand and tell me what they think, like what conflict is? I'll call on you and you can just unmute. It can be like a very general definition too. Um, Angela Mat Mata, Mata, sorry if I completely butchered your last name. You said at the right time. Um, conflict is usually like a problem between like two or more people or just like with like one person, like an internal conflict. Usually people think of like an argument or people disagree on something. But sometimes like with like one person with themselves, like an internal conflict, they're so conflicted in like what to do with their lives or you know, like, oh man, like I'm very lost. Like what should I do next? Like with this project, like I could do this or I could do this. Like, Okay, yeah, that was perfect. So I define conflict, if we can go to the next slide really quickly. Um, I define conflict as a disagreement where two or more people hold differing opinions on one certain subject. So you really got that. So going to the next slide, um, if I can have two people raise their hands and tell me what's the first thing they saw when they looked at this photo, and please only say one thing. Um, Burke, K, okay. sorry. Um, I saw a rabbit first. Okay, can everyone raise their hand who saw the rabbit? Okay, cool. So we got a couple of people who um, raised their hand for a rabbit. Did anyone see anything else? If they want to raise their hand and tell me. I saw a duck. Thank you. There's also a duck in this photo. Can everyone raise their hand and like tell me if they saw the duck or not? Okay, so yeah, we have a couple of people. So this picture is supposed to represent how there's multiple perspectives on one problem. As you can see, some people saw a duck and some people saw a bunny and some people probably saw both, but you have to take in all perspectives to handle a problem like a leader. Um, going to the next slide, um, how to bring up a problem. When you're bringing up a problem, 
use I language. That's called using your perspective. That's using I language. So you speak for yourself. So you wouldn't say like, you did this and this is how you feel. You'd say like, this is how I feel about this problem. Um, privately and respectfully. So you wanna bring up a problem, like not in front of a bunch of people, obviously not in front of a class cause the person being confronted can be very embarrassed. And it can also lead to more people like being in the split sides, which will lead like even more conflict. And you want to acknowledge all sides of the argument, just like the activity we just did, like looking at all perspectives, like a leader. And you want to identify each other's goals. So as they're talking, you wanna evaluate what they're saying and how to come up with a solution and what they want out of it. And you have to take a selfless approach because obviously when you have a problem, it's between two different parties. So it wouldn't be just you, 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 it has to be both of you. Um, how to resolve, resolve a conflict, sorry. <laughs> um, aim for a win-win situation. If you have a win-lose situation or a lose-lose situation, you're most likely going to end up losing that friend and or uh, causing more tension and controversy, which just isn't good. Um, know when to step back. An effective leader always knows when to step back and ask for help from an outside opinion, whether that's a, t a teacher, other adults, parents, and other things. You always wanna keep your composure. Um, healthy resolutions. Communicating and act active listening. Communicating is key when you're in a conflict. You as a leader want to be able to know how to talk to the person and show them that you're listening to them. Like you want to keep an open stance. You want to make sure you're looking at them, not looking at your phone or somewhere else. Um, forgiving for mistakes. So I follow the 555 rule that I actually learned from Coach Kyla here. So forgiving mistakes, you're going to think about, is it actually going to matter in five minutes, five months, and five years? Most likely it won't matter in five years or five months. Um, collaborating and compromising. As we can see on the graph to your left, compromising and collaborating are both like the best ways to solve a conflict because it takes in enough of concern for yourself and concern for others. So you wanna make sure that you're using those two because that's how you'll get a win-win situation other than fighting, denial and smoothing it over where well, you're most likely gonna get a win-lose or a lose-lose. And how to prevent conflict in the future. Um, again, being an active listener and communicator with all times of people, don't make other people feel insignificant to you. Don't let the problem get out of hand. So if you can detect a problem early on, you make sure you don't wanna have it like flare up and be bigger than it needs to be. Um, be honest with everyone. You don't wanna like lie because you're most likely going to get exposed for the lie. It's just not gonna be the best for you. Um, let others speak for themselves. This goes along with using the I language and making sure that you're not putting words in other people's mouth and being the bigger person. Again, knowing when to step back, knowing to be like, hey, this is like what's happening. Like, I think we should like talk about this and be able to like solve it together. Um, this is a four-way test. So the four-way test is what Rotary uses to evaluate solutions. And I think that you guys could use this too. I think it might be in your notebooks. If not, you can like search it up and it'll be like the first thing to come up because it's all by Rotary and it'll be like a ton of solutions. Um, so I usually would have you guys say this, but since I, we're all like online, I'm not gonna have us sound like zombies right now. Um, so like the first is, is it the truth? The second is, is it fair to all concerned? The third is, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And the fourth is, will it be beneficial to all concerned? So use that to evaluate like your problems and whether solutions is like good for everyone. And then thank you again for listening. This is like all of my socials. If you guys ever had a problem and need that unskewed opinion for your problems, like just DM me or like email me or anything like that. And I'm here to help. And also if we have any questions, just type them in the chat. Thanks, Kanit. Uh, raise your hand or I will say something to the chat. You can type it in if you'd like. We're getting a lot of woots. Woot. That's my favorite. It's not my woot. last name, by the way. I just like No. <laughs> oh, Anyone? Chain. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, wait. There is one question by... Tess. Oh I'm so sorry. I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> You want to do it, Kyle? <laughs> no, you can do it. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. 
Oh, is it Tristan? I'm just gonna like Tristan Barrett Barrett. If you you can unmute yourself too. Oh, I didn't have a question. Okay, okay. that's fine. My hands just still raised for some reason. I oh, that's perfectly out. fine. You're good. You're good. Okay, and then there's nothing else in the chat, right? All right, I think that's it. Thanks, Ganit. Thank you, guys. All right. So, attendees, we are now going to be doing a breakout session. Please stay at your computer and you will automatically be put into a breakout session. Okay. We hope you enjoyed your breakout session. Thank you so much for attending the first day of RILA. And we are excited to see you all back here on the call tomorrow at 6 p.m. sharp for another exciting day of RILA. Please make sure you look at the link tree and follow Ryla on Instagram and Facebook at Ryla6400. Thank you so much for attending. If you have any questions, you can stay on the call and uh, we can, I can answer them for you. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night.